What's up, everybody? This is Dr. Nick with Leverage Media. Welcome to another episode of Path to a Million podcast. Uh, we have a special Ask Dr. Nick episode today. This is my first, uh, I don't know what they call this, is like a mashup uh, between, like what do they call that when it's like one brand and then the X and then another brand, a collab. That's yeah, what it, there that's it what is, nice, nice. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here with, uh, with my buddy, uh, Johnny Reuter, with uh, the Legendary Chiropractor podcast, the Legendary Chiropractor brand. I love what this kid is doing with, uh, I shouldn't call you kid. I love what this guy is doing for the profession. Um, he's doing content marketing, exactly what we talk about all the time. If you guys aren't listening to his podcast, you absolutely should be, especially if you're new in practice. He's just got so much great content and great value for you guys that are really trying to get off to a fast start. So uh, Johnny, introduce yourself a little bit more to the people and let them know who you are. Yeah, absolutely, Dr. Nick. I really appreciate you having me on your show. This is awesome, a path to a million. I mean, like, my gosh, what, what more could you want in life, right? Like that, that's the <laughs> dream, right? It's like, let's make it happen, let's make it there. So um, no, I'm Johnny Reuter. I, uh, I went to, to tell you a long story short, I, I wanted to become a chiropractor since I was 13 years old. Um, chiropractic completely changed my life and um, I had terrible allergies not that that's really important but um, it literally reversed and 180 my entire life and I said I want to do exactly what that guy does right and so I, I worked my butt off to get to where I am I went to the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire for my undergrad got a bachelor's in kinesiology and then came here down to Marietta Georgia from Chicago originally and went to and have attended Life University and will actually graduate in March, uh, the end of March of this year, which is pretty freaking exciting. But at the yeah. same time, I, uh, during that whole entire experience in chiropractic school, I got to about eighth quarter and I was like, you know what, how do I take what I learned at the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire and because we had a pre-chiropractic club, it had existed for about 20, 25 years, somewhere in that like long duration of time that just still blows my mind to this day. Um, but they had a pre-chiropractic club. I started following people like yourself, Dr. Nick, like, you know, the big names in chiropractic that were really moving boulders for chiropractic and natural health. And I was like, this is really interesting, right? And I was completely entrenched in the philosophy of chiropractic before I even, you know, got to chiropractic school. I used to, I, I was the president of the pre-chiropractic club at Eau Claire. And I, we used to fly in all the schools, no matter what we, we flew in every single school, no matter their philosophy. So every chiropractic student could, could really kind of sit with themselves and sit with who just presented in front of them and said, did this, did that resonate with me? Now let's make a decision on where I want to go in my life, where I want to go with this chiropractic profession. Um, and Life University was that for me. So that's where I ended up. And while I've been at Life, eighth quarter, like I said earlier, I started this podcast, the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. I also started a complete um, brand and platform to go along with the Legendary Chiropractor, right? And it's not about me. I'm not the Legendary Chiropractor, right? It's not, it's not about, you know, just, you know, myself becoming hopefully one day, a legendary chiropractor. It's about all of us as a collective of chiropractic students and recent graduates, because that's my audience. That's my niche um, of who I want to give back to. I want to give back to my peers. And it's about all of us becoming legendary chiropractors together on this path to a million, right? Let's just, let's throw that out there, right? So it's, it's all about that. So I'm really excited to be on your show today, Dr. Nick, and I'm, I'm pumped for chiropractic. And I hope that kind of encompasses my introduction and hopefully I'll kind of be able to touch on the legendary chiropractor a little bit more um, of what we do and what we're doing for chiropractic students and recent grads, but I'm honored to be on your show, doc. Absolutely. Um, you know, these kids, they just got a lot to say, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first Ask Dr. Nick show where I've had a guest. So I'm excited for this. And the reason why you might be asking yourself, he hasn't even graduated from school yet. What could he possibly answer on the Ask Dr. Nick show? I'm glad you asked uh, because today we, so last Sunday, if you guys didn't listen, I did uh, an Ask Dr. Nick show where I took questions and Johnny uh, submit was kind enough to submit one of them. Uh, they, uh, I got questions from people that are students, uh, recent graduates or 
just got an associateship and I asked for questions that they had for doctors that would potentially be hiring associates. And then I gave my perspective on that. Now, I haven't been an associate or looking for a job in a long time. So I thought I would bring on Johnny because I don't think that there's anybody out there that really understands where the, the profession is at in terms of the schools and the recent graduates the way that he does. Um, he's been doing it for a long time. He interviews students. He interviews recent graduates. And I think that he could give a lot of perspective to those docs that are out there that are maybe thinking about um, hiring an associate. And so the way I'm going to structure this is I've got some questions here. I think they're pretty good ones. I got some from some friends. Then I had some uh, that, I, that I came up with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask him to Johnny. He's going to answer it for himself. He's actually in the market right now for an associateship. He wants to practice in Chicago. So if you're in Chicago and you hear what he has to say, you know, hit him up. But um, he's going to answer for himself. And then he's going to answer kind of for the collective after that, for the, the, the student population or the recent graduates as a whole. And then I'm going to put in my two cents uh, at the end of that just so that we can keep this Ask Dr. Nick thing pure. All right. So, Johnny, you ready for the first question? I'm, I'm ready. Throw it. All right. What are the top three things you are looking for from an associateship? Number one has to be experience. What, what does that experience, and I'll kind of expand on a little bit, um, but what does that experience look like, right? Uh, if it's someone who I really resonate with, if I, if I like their philosophy, if I like how they practice, right? I'm, not, I'm going into the same kind of model practice that I want to eventually, hopefully open up um, for myself. And so I want experience. I want experience with everything. I want experience from the moment a new patient walks in the door. What does that look like? What does the greeting look like? What does the handshake look like? What does what does the day one look like? What does the day two look like? And so on and so forth, right? But also when I talk about experience, I want to go segue into number two. What is the training? What does the training look like? The training meaning what kind of seminars are, are, is this doctor involved in and how are they going to allow me to step into that training with them so I'm not you know, a dog on a leash the whole time trying to figure out where we're, where we're coming from, what kind of procedures we're running and what kind of systems we have in place. Like That to me sounds super overwhelming. So definitely experience and then training for sure. Like what kind of seminars are you gonna send me to to learn what you've done um, especially if you are running specific protocols in, in your office to be, you know, running smoothly and you're, you're using a practice management group or you're using whatever you've created. I want to know what that is so I can best serve you, your patients and your, your entire community. The third thing I would say is what are you looking for from, from me, right? What are you looking for from me? I want to know exactly the, so the experience, the training, and I want to know my role in your office. I want to know, I want you to be crystal clear. I don't want you just to say, you're an associate doctor, right? Yay. You know, woohoo. Yay. I'm an associate doctor. That could mean anything. And you and I can sit here and, you know, we can, we can probably, you know, come up with a million different, you know, scenarios or, or examples of where associateships went right, where they went wrong, and everything in between. So I wanna know exactly why I'm in your office. Is it for new patient generation? Is it to adjust people? Is it to do only exams and, and, and stuff like that? Um, or is it all three, but an emphasis on one over the other, right? Because a lot of times I, I found that docs are hiring to, to really explode their practice, right? I want to go to that next level, but I'm at a level where I'm going to need help if I get to the next level. So yeah. let's, let's hire somebody. Let's have them help us out. But I don't want to be just the guinea pig or, or the cattle that goes out and brings in a bunch of new patients and then never adjusts them, never exams them, never sees them. And now I'm just this, this voice for your practice. That's great and all if you want that. But I think you can find that without being having to hire a doctor. So I, I, that's my personal opinion. But I would definitely say experience, training, and what is my role? That would, that's what okay. I would want to know for me personally, for sure. So real quick, just so I can give some context to what, like, what type of situation are you personally looking for, just so that they know where that's coming from? Because there's, there's become a long-term associate. 
There's become an associate, learn, and then leave. There's uh, become an associate, learn, and then partner with that doctor. And then there's just start straight from scratch. So what is it that you're looking to do kind of in the next three to five years? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm looking at about an 18 month contract. So about a year and a half, I'm learning to, I'm, I'm hoping and going to learn and then leave. But with the guidance and the mentorship, hopefully established in that relationship to open a successful practice, not doing exactly what that doctor was doing, um, but using the trainings, the protocols, some of the systems that made sense to me and how I can now apply those to my practice, where I'm going to practice and in my future community. So definitely more of a short term thing. Um, but I'm really heavy on what is the value that I'm going to leave yeah. that office with to apply to my future practice. Yeah. Yeah. So you're looking to, you're looking to learn and then start your own. Absolutely. Now for the, for the collective and just be like kind of shorter with this answer, just cause we have a lot to get through you got it. Um, with, with the collective, what do you think that are the top three things that they're looking for in an associateship? Yeah, yeah, for sure. The top, so a lot of people don't know what the heck to look for in an associateship, right? They think it's yeah. like, you know, you and I have had this conversation, but they think it's something of along the lines of, I look at a contract, I like the contract, I sign the contract, I work for you, right? And yeah. it's not that, it's not that easy, right? So I would definitely say that number one, they're looking for money, right? They're looking to be paid. People want to be paid coming out of chiropractic school. I'm sorry, but we're $270,000 in debt. We're not yeah. looking for a 30,000, 40,000, you know, annual salary. That's just not something in a chiropractic student's mind. Um, I, I would say that the second thing would probably be, you know, what do you, what does the doctor have to offer for me? Right. What kind of um, not only benefits, talking more on the pay side again, not only benefits, but also what is the doctor offering me in regards to maybe training or in regards to how many patients I can see, you know, how many, how many exams I get to do, you know, am I taking, you know, or not taking garbage out, but am I sweeping? Am I, you know, doing all this other stuff that isn't really yeah. what I want to be doing um, as an associate, right? And then I would say the third thing for, for general chiropractic students coming out or recent graduates is, is location. Where is this place located, right? I, 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 you don't know because a lot of associates are all over the place and they're kind of scattered, right? And a lot of times you're not going to really find an associateship maybe in the heart of your hometown, but also, you know, where is it located in regards of where you're going to springboard, right? Or depending on what you said, what option are you doing? Right. So I think right. a lot of people weigh the location aspect for sure. Like if someone offers you two different positions and they're the exact same contract in two different locations, that's going to play a huge factor in what somebody's going to make or decide on. Yeah. I, the, the things that I would add to that are I, cause I talk to a lot of students um, for whatever reason, like they just seem to follow me or be more interactive than, uh, than, people at other stages of, of their career in terms of like my content marketing. And um, the things that I really hear is they're, they're looking for clarity and leadership. They want to know exactly what it is. They want to know that the doctor has a plan. You know, I think everybody in the world is, is looking to be led. Even leaders are looking to be led. And if they see somebody who's a stronger leader than they are, they will tend to follow. And so what I, what I think that, uh, that uh, creates a lot of bad associateships is that the chiropractor just like hires one because they want to grow, but they don't really know what it is that they're going to do to grow. And they just kind of like throw the, so like they've never done a spinal screen before. Or they've never done a, done a dinner talk, but they're like, that sounds like a good idea. I don't want to do it, but Johnny would be great at it. So let me throw Johnny to the wolves and see how it goes. And it's like, they, they, don't want to be the one solving the problems, especially right out of school. They want to know that they've got a system uh, that can be followed. But I think we touched on a lot of the things uh, like what you said. All right. Question number two. So you, Johnny, as an individual, what do you think is a reasonable starting salary? Would you rather have a lower base with more upside or a higher base for more security? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is a great question. Um, and I'm pretty sure it might be mine, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> um, but no, th this is this is a good question because it's it's for me personally a good a good starting salary is is what. But I'm also offering what um, I'm bringing my value to this situation as well. So you have sure. to consider that. Please, I want to throw a disclaimer out there so no one's like you don't whoa, have to whoa. you don't have to disclaim anything. Like you just <laughs> I'm like own your my, answers. I, like. Who I'm cares what anybody myself. thinks? So, so uh, I would say you're from Wisconsin. Between, you're like too nice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I would say anywhere between you know fifty five thousand and and six or high sixties, right? Sixty five, maybe sixty eight, somewhere in that range um, for a first year associate who is looking for what I'm looking for, right? Looking for yeah. a springboard to boost them into a successful practice that is eventually going to be a hopefully million dollar practice right so right. it's it's really looking at that so i would say anywhere between 55 and uh uh high 60s but when we talk about the fifty-five thousand dollar salary we're talking that's pretty in my opinion what i've heard and i'm actually going home next week to talk to eight different offices about associateships um looking over contracts talking negotiations all of this stuff so what I'm, what I'm looking for specifically is if it's a lower end salary of what I just said is, is it, does the bonus structure make sense? Is it attainable? Is it achievable? Right. And now are there benefits attached to that? Right. Is there paid time off? Is there healthcare stipends? Is there malpractice paid for? Is there um, a retirement plan? Something along those lines or all of those things that are included at this 55 K. Right yeah. now, if we talk about the other end, you're looking at a $68,000 salary. They, the doc who's hiring you, in my opinion, doesn't necessarily have to offer all of those things to you. So it, it's because of that salary being so, so high or higher than um, what that 55 is, you're looking at maybe, you know, them paying for malpractice since it's only about 300 bucks a year or so. Um, so it, it doesn't really, depending on what plan you get, but it's, it's really comes down to like, you can go low salary base, you know, attainable, super attainable bonus and a lot of benefits, or you can go high with not a lot of benefits, not really an attainable, you know, bonus structure, unless you're, you know, mm -hmm. booming, <laughs> you know, you're booming yeah. their practice because they're not going to give you a bonus structure unless you're prof they're profitable from you. Um, yeah. But I like to be somewhere right in the middle for me personally, okay. somewhere right in the middle. Yeah. Six, low sixties, probably. Yeah. And then what would you say is the, is the kind of thought process of the, of the collective? <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. So <laughs> the, the thought process um, of the collective is about, you know, valuing themselves at about a hundred thousand dollars or $80,000. Um, and I'm just saying that to be frank, I'm, I'm saying that honestly, truthfully. again, no need to, no need to <laughs> qualify. You like, just tell me the answers. I just, I, I, I just have to do that. It's, it's because to me, it's, it's ridiculous, but we're, I've heard conversations. Why of, do you, why do you think it, why do you think it's ridiculous? I, I, because I don't think as a first year associate, we are, in my opinion, we're considered a liability in, in my mind, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm not. I know for a fact that the first six to eight months of me being in that practice, I am not generating any more profit than what that doc has previously done before I got there. Right. If anything, we might, you know, we might reach new numbers or whatever, depending on how like quickly we get to the marketing, how quickly we get to new patient generation through my effort or through our yeah. efforts. Um, but until they're profitable from hiring you, that usually isn't until a bonus structure. That's when your bonus structure kicks in. And at eighty thousand dollars, right? Unless your your office is pulling in a hundred k a month, um, I'm not sure a hundred k plus a month or eighty k plus a month. Um, I'm not sure you're you're really worth that as a first year associate, right? You don't have the experience, you don't have the business knowledge, and you're walking into their baby of of a practice that they've worked their butts off to build. And you, in my opinion, it's almost disrespectful. So I, I think asking for that is, is borderline disrespectful. Um, but I also think being humble with yourself, <laughs> like just because you have DR in front of your name does not mean that, that you need to be paid, you know, a, immediately what you think you're worth because you have that title right out of the gate. You have a lot to learn. And I know that for a fact, I have a ton that I do not know and that I'm willing to learn. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, that's that's just kind of what I have to say about that. Makes a lot of sense. I um, I, I I would I would kind of uh, I would argue with a couple things that you said in that like I think that you like just knowing you a little bit like you're a star like you're gonna be great right so you're gonna you're gonna be profitable probably in month two or th- even at like sixty thousand like it's five grand a month five grand a month is basically a hundred uh is it a hundred visits yeah a hundred visits that's twenty five visits a week you'll be doing that in like month one, two, three, because any office you're going to go to is going to be a good office. It's going to be a well-run office. It's going to be, it's going to have new patients coming in. And so you'll be profitable almost immediately. Most, I think most associates in a decent office are profitable usually within the first three to six months. Um, So I don't think that, listen, I'll pay you a million dollars if you can make me a million five, two million, right? I'll pay you whatever it takes to, to, to bring value. The problem is, is if you think you're worth $100,000, you better bring it and you better make it worthwhile. You know, the, the way that I always look at like associateships and just like um, uh, any type of like professional, like my girlfriend's an attorney. So like uh, if, if she has an associ- uh, another attorney in her practice, you know, somewhere between 25 and 33% of what you're bringing in still allows me to pay the overhead, pay all the staff that makes your life easy and be profitable because you can't, as an associate, you can't take all the money. Like it's gotta be a win, win, win for everybody. Right. right? And uh, so if you think, if you have a plan, like if you come to me right now and you're like, Nick, I know that I can collect $300,000 this year and here's how I'm going to do it. I'll pay you a hundred thousand dollars. Now, if you don't do it, like, you're probably not going to keep making a hundred thousand dollars for very long, but I'll do it. If I, re- if you really convince me that I'm going to make $300,000 extra money that I would have never made otherwise. Cause a lot of times people bring in associates and it cannibalizes their practice. They see the new patients that the, you know, the practice, that was what was nice about me when I brought on my second associate is I stopped seeing patients. So now I gave all of the patients to my two doctors. And so that was, that was easy for me to be able to like really track, the, the profitability. Mm-hmm. All right. Question number three. Uh, what do you hope to get from your boss outside of pay? So we talked a little bit about this earlier, um, the training, um, the leadership. Is there anything else that, just because we have a lot of other questions to get to, is there any el- anything else that you didn't mention before? I didn't realize that that was kind of a no, brief, it's, no, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would just say the only thing I would add to that truly is like, I would emphasize mentorship. Um, yeah. and we can t- kind of tie that into leadership, but mentorship yeah. lasts after your associateship. Um, right. and that, that adds kind of like an, in, uh, more value when you leave and you walk across or not walk across, but you, you leave and you kind of start venturing out on your own, right? You know, you have someone in your back pocket or the front of your mind that you can rely on as an accountability partner, as someone who's going to keep you on task. And someone you can ask raw, real questions to because a lot of times, like docs aren't willing to give their, their secrets away. But if you put in the work and you work your butt off for however long for them, like 18 months, two years, three years, whatever it is, um, I, ho- I would hope a great mentorship turns out after that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of the collective, what do you think on that? Anything other than, than what we talked I, about? I would, I would continue to say mentorship and, and leadership for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, let's see, uh, what do you hope to get from your boss outside of pay? Um, I do think that there needs to be, um, I, I think that they're looking like, uh, for the associates that I've had, it's like they're looking for a home. They're looking for a place to like be a part of, to be a part of a team and if they are looking to go out on their own, they are looking for how do you lead a team? It's beyond just like, how do you run a business? How do you pay taxes? How do you get new patients and convert them and retain them? It's really about how to build uh, leaders within your team. And, uh, and I think that that's one of the things, and it just depends on, on what it is that the associates wanting to get out of it. But I think that that's an important one. All right, question number four. <clears throat> how much outside work do you think should be done to grow your patient base? Um, like as me as an associate? Yeah, you, Johnny. Okay, okay. Um, but no, as an associate though, right? Yes, like, as an okay. associate. Like cool, you, cool, cool. let me say it again. How much outside work do you think should be done to grow your patient base? Got 
Got it. Okay. Um, I would say, I, I would say a lot, a lot of work. I, it, because a lot of times people are bringing on associates to build their practice or, or to grow, like we talked about earlier, to take it to that next level. Right. Um, but it depends on how, how they're doing their patient, new patient generation. Right. It, it's, right. I could sit behind a computer and rock out, you know, a couple Facebook ads for sure. Um, but I, I also want to experience myself personally. I, I want to also experience, you know, I want to go back to my CA days of, you know, doing the screenings and, and doing the fishbowl marketing and getting out doing talks and corporate talks and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely. I would say a lot, but in the sense of seeing five, you know, after that associateship, seeing down the road of like what I'm going to have to do to build a practice, I want to do that as an associate. So I have that experience going into building a practice. The first time you give a health talk should not be when you're about to open your doors like that, that right. just, that to me does not make any sense. So yeah, I would definitely yeah. want to do that for sure. A lot. And then what do you think for the, what do you think for the collective? It really depends on, I would say it depends on personality. I'm the type of person that really wants to go out and get it. And like, Hey, I want to be in front of you with a spine talking about chiropractic. If, yeah. if someone isn't necessarily like that, it might look a little bit different for them. I'm also the person to ask if you come in by yourself and your kids aren't under care and your husband or wife isn't under care or your grandmother's not under care. I'm asking yeah. you why, right? Like right. I'm having that conversation. Are you the only one that, you know, wants true health in your, in your family? Like I don't get <laughs> it, but that's just me personally. A lot of people aren't like that. So you got to figure out what they're, what speaks and what resonates to them. They have to figure out what you and I talk about clarity, right? Like they have yeah. to know who they are and how that looks for them. I don't think a lot of associates are looking to do a lot of marketing unless they're going and springboarding into the practice, right? So it's, or springboarding into their own practice. Um, yeah. But again, that goes back to what is your role? What do you want right. me in your office to do? That's, that's kind of my short but I, answer. You know, one of the things that I, I think that uh, kids coming out of school now or people coming out of school now, um, get, kind of get a bad rap on is most of you are millennials and you know, these like forties and fifties and 60 year old, you know, men and women that have run these practice are just like, Oh, all these millennials are terrible. And none of them, they're all so lazy and entitled and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, man, some of my best employees that I've ever had are millennials. I, you're a rock star. You're a millennial. I know lots of rock stars that are millennials, right? I've interviewed a lot of people that are millennials that are just crushing it. Right. So I think that, um, that with that, I do think that they're, and it's not, it's not this generation. I think it's just all associateships probably from the beginning of time is that they just don't think they should have to like build it. And I, I think that if you're an associate, you should take on ownership of that practice as if it is your own. And if you take that mentality for any associate, like potential associate that's sitting out there, you take on that mentality, man, the sky's the limit. That person will never want to let you go. Like you will find, we were talking in our CEO training today about, uh, we, we were talking about the three things that make up uh, any employee, talent, skill, and heart. And I will take a one on skill. I'll take like a seven on talent, but I need a 10 in heart. And that comes with the associates. Like all skills are trainable. You only have, you only have as much talent as you have, right? The one thing that you can control is how much you give a shit. And if you go in there as if that is your own place, I, it will come back to you tenfold because the, the owner is going to want to pour into you. They're going to want, they're going to see, because when you come into an associate, sometimes it's like, you, everybody's like sizing each other up. Are you going to screw me over? Are you going to screw me over? But it's like, once those walls are down, man, that's when the magic happens. And so that's what I would say to any associate that's out, or any student that's out there that's listening to this. Um, all right, number five, what are you most worried about as a soon to be graduate that is looking for an associateship? What like keeps you up at night? Um, re repeat, repeat the beginning of the question again. What are you most worried about as, as a soon to be graduate that is looking for an associateship? Finding an associateship on time, <laughs> on time. Right. before, before I walk across the stage. 
Um, because a lot, of, I, in my opinion, a lot of times, and, or not in my opinion, but for me personally, it came down to, holy cow, I need to figure this out. Right. And it wasn't because I didn't have a plan before I did have a plan before it fell through. Right. And a lot of times we go throughout school, we were thinking and rocking and rolling. We're like, yeah, we're going to get out. We're going to practice or we're going to open up or we're going to associate with this doc back home or we're going to do this, that, and the other thing. And then all of a sudden, bam, life hits you and that doesn't happen. Things fall through, things change, things happen. That's what happened to me. And I was like, okay, we, it's time to, it's time to play, right. It's time to figure this out. Um, and like I said, I'm the kind of guy that go get it. <laughs> so right. I went and got it. Right. And I, that's why I'm going home next week. And we're going to, I'm going to go to eight, eight different offices, talk to eight different doctors and meet their teams, meet their staff, talk about contracts, negotiate and figure out what's really going to be the best place for me to be. Um, when I, when I move home into an associateship. Got it. And what do you think on the collective? What are they most worried about? Money. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely money. Because it's, it's, it's the one thing that we are taught and, and so fearful of going throughout the chiropractic education, that mm -hmm. money is so bad that we have all this debt that we're never going to, you know, see the other side of it, blah, 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 blah. Money yeah. is absolutely on the forefront of every single chiropractic student's mind. Got it. Yeah. All right. Uh, these next three questions uh, came, I, I reached out to my buddies over at Cairo Matchmakers, Alan Miner and, uh, and Mark Mao, um, because what Cairo Matchmakers does is it helps uh, match up uh, associates with, with great opportunities. And, um, and so they have a lot of insight into, they have a lot of conversations with docs that are looking to uh, bring on associates and they also have a lot of conversations with the associates themselves. So uh, one of the things, and I thought this was a good one, is there, a is there still a stigma in school that to be a successful chiropractor, you need to own your own practice? Uh, short answer, yes. <laughs> um, there, there absolutely is. Yeah, absolutely. There's, yeah. you know, and we, you know, you and I had this conversation, but it's, yeah. if you are, want to be a successful chiropractor, yeah, yeah, owning your own practice is something that, that is in the foreseeable future. Um, yeah. but some people I've talked to plenty of chiropractic students to segue into the, the student aspect, um, or the, yeah, the general student body aspect. I've talked to yeah. plenty of students who know and are clear that like, Hey, I want to be an associate for the rest of my life. Like, that's yeah. what I want to do. I never want to own a business. I never want to do the entrepreneurial yeah. side. I never want to worry about that stuff. All I want to yeah. do is go get new patients, bring them in the door, adjust them and, and, you know, move on with my life. Right. Like yeah. that, that to me, that kind of clarity in school is, is absolutely key. Um, but there's not a lot of people like that who are, who are doing that, but yeah, it, it, it's still a stigma for sure to own a practice is successful chiropractor for sure. And I think my two and I've talked a little bit about this and we just talked about it on your podcast. We did an interview on, on your legendary chiropractor uh, right before this, that I just don't think that many of I don't think that many chiropractors are true entrepreneurs and probably sh like, I think that 60% of the business owners out there that run chiropractic practices, they just own a job. They don't own a business. It's not worth anything. It just like pays them a hundred thousand dollars a year and that's about it. And so if you are not a true bred entrepreneur, you probably don't need to start your own practice. I, I had an interview with Todd Pickman and he was telling me about uh, the last year that he was in his associateship, he was on track to make $300,000 as an associate because he had a deal and he was going to collect a million dollars that year for his own service. And he was going to collect, I think like 30% of it. And I'm like, that exists. If you're able to produce like that, you don't have to like do it as an owner. You can do it as a, basically like as a partner within the practice and, and be paid on a percentage. Like I have, a, I have an associate that's been with me for 10 and a half years that, uh, you know, get, gets paid really well because he makes, you know, a, a part of, he's basically like a partner within the practice. Mm -hmm. And so you, there, those opportunities are out there, but you have to make them happen as the associate. You have to like show that you care. And that is what I'm saying. Like I, like I all of you should be paying attention to the way Johnny is thinking about things and the way that he's talking about them, because I can guarantee you the chiropractors that are out there that are in Chicago are going to be blowing up his Facebook 
uh, messenger because that is what you want to hear out of an associate. And when you hear it, it's like you would never hear it the way that it's being said. So when you hear it, it's just like a clarion song. Like you're just like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So number seven, uh, what is the percentage breakdown of what students are doing out of school in terms of opening their own right away, their own practice, associating and then opening up their own, looking for long-term associateships, or they're lost, not sure what the next step is. So kind of um, like if there was a pie, that, so this isn't really a question for you specifically. No, yeah. But I if there it. was a pie, like how would it break down, you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would say for sure um, there's, your, there's your definitely your slice that has no idea what they want to do still. Right. And, yeah. and even I, we're graduating in March, it's February 20th. <laughs> like yeah. we graduate in, in a, in a, in a month. Right. Yeah. And there are still those few that are like, not sure, not sure where I'm going, not sure what I'm doing. And, and that, you know, and I, I personally think that's okay. But at the same time, it's like, oh, you, you paid how you should much? Pick one. To, you, you paid how much to do, to do, to do what? Like you're just going to sit right. on this one. Like, I don't think so. I think the egg's pretty warm. Like it's, it's cooked. Like I think we're good. Right. Um, but the, there's, there's that slice. I, it's small. It's small. Um, but there's all, but those are people that have, you know, kind of gone through some sort of bad process that put them in that position of like, you know, I don't know what I'm doing now. Right. Yeah. I had something. I don't know where I'm at now. Um, yeah. but that's small. Then I would say majority or probably go and associate, then open up their own practice. And then, you know, you have those, those few that are saying, boom, we're going not few, but more than the, more than the people that have no idea what yeah. they're doing um, are going all in starting to practice. I know where I'm going. I know who I'm, who, who's my ideal client. I know all of those things I have them all figured out. Um, yeah. Or a lot of times they're in some sort of practice management group, some sort of coaching program that is guiding yeah. them every single step of the way. Um, yeah. And they're paying, they're paying very, very good money to be a part sure. of that organization or organizations. Um, yeah. And it, it becomes, it becomes an interesting dynamic, but yeah, I'd say majority associate then open up a, a little less than that are going to open up right away. I, most likely through a practice management company. And yeah. then you have your sliver of people who just, who just aren't sure. And then the fourth one was uh, people that are just looking for long-term associates, associateships right out Yeah, of I would say that's even less than the people that are confused. Yeah. Wow, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would say, I yeah. would say the people, because, so you have to think of the intimidation factor. And I don't think a lot of docs think of that when they, when they are hiring an associate or have hired yeah. several associates. I don't care if it's your first or your 700th. Yeah. Um, you have to think of the in intimidation factor of a contract. I know it shouldn't be there, but it's there. Um, you have to deal with that fact that like a student, a, a recent grad is nervous to sign a contract. They don't know what it is. They don't have a lawyer. They don't have, you know, maybe other chiropractors who are great mentors that are willing to read it over for them. Um, yeah. Or they're seeing a shiny number and they're like, Hey, I'm going to pay you 70 K. But then there's all this gibberish. That's like non competes of 500 miles and all this, this garbage in there that they didn't know about, but they signed it because it was a good pay structure. Right. Um, yeah. And that makes me nervous. But at the same time, I would say the, the people that are going into only associating and want to do that long-term are few and far between. And they're super crystal clear that that's what they want to do. Um, mm -hmm. I will say this. I think a lot of people who associate and want to do the springboard thing and go open yeah. up, will likely stay there longer than yeah. they, than they intend on. But that's I because agree. they have the solid pay, you know, imagine going 65 K to zero and, and more debt because you're opening up a business. Right. Yeah. I think a lot more people, we see a lot more people in that transition phase yeah. versus the actual recent graduate that's going into that situation that you, you mentioned as the fourth option. I, I think those people that think of it as a springboard, not guys like you, but they just like, they feel like they're supposed to say that. They feel like they're supposed to open yes. up their own sometime. Yeah. I think those people are just lying to themselves. I think the, the 20 to 30% that are going to start out right away 
Those are the ones that I really do think are the entrepreneurs or the ones like you where they know I just need to go somewhere for a year. Like for me, I'm a natural born entrepreneur, but I wanted an associateship for a year in Springfield and then go off to Austin and open up my own. I knew always that I wanted to open my own. That's why I became a chiropractor because I could open up my own, because I could be my own boss. Mm -hmm. But the ones that are like, ah, you know, I'll, I'll be an associate for two or three years and then I'll open up my own. I think you're just saying that because you think you're supposed to. And I'm just, I, I'm going to keep beating this drum. Then it's like, you don't have to start your own to be successful. Yeah. You know? So anyway, that's yeah. owning a business. There's nothing like glamorous about it. Like, I don't know why it has become like some kind of thing to put up on a pedestal. Like I am jealous of my associates half the time of the, of the, the level of, of stress that they have. They get to go home at six o'clock. I'm still here at nine doing podcast interviews. You know what I mean? And then I got to drive home to Chicago. I'll get home at one in the morning. We're closing on our condo tomorrow at 8 a.m. And I got a full day of strategy sessions after that. Like running businesses is hard. You got to like actually want to do it, but that's neither here nor there. You <laughs> teach their own, right? All right. So <laughs> I don't know what that had to do with anything. All right. Uh, number eight, this is the last question. Would it be helpful if there was a business that they could trust to help place them into good associate positions, doing what they are talented or passionate in, meaning like patient care, diagnosis, like exam doc, marketing, whatever. So this is a little bit of a selfish question for Kyra matchmakers because that's what obviously they do. But do you think that if, if there was more, I, the, the way I, because I've talked to uh, Stephen Francis about this, who's also a partner in, in Kyra matchmakers. I've talked to him about this before of like, there should be like, I, I should be your agent, right? Like I know how to negotiate with other chiropractors. You were saying 55 to 68, fuck, I'd get you 120, right? Like I know you're worth it. You, like you don't even know what you're worth. Like the kid coming out of uh, college, that's like, a, you know, he went to some, like he went to University of Wisconsin, uh, Eau Claire or whatever. And, uh, but he's like some stud line and he doesn't know anything about the NFL. He needs an agent that's going to get him in shape for the draft. Who's going to make, I, I was literally thinking about this today when I read this question and I was like thinking about it. I'm like, why is there not a combine that like associates go to, like we could have it at Mount Orb, you know, like have it at the Gonstead clinic and have a, have a, a combine where everybody that wants associateships goes, everybody that wants to get an associate goes and like, let's get it going. Let's like match people up. I, I don't disagree with you. I, I really am not going to sit here and disagree with you. But I also, I also think that uh, there's, there's, a, there's a sense in chiropractic that we're all in competition with one another, right? And yeah. that if we are to help- It's a zero-sum game. It's a huh? zero-sum game. It's yeah. a zero-sum game. Somebody <laughs> like, let's say you and me are going for the same associateship. They're probably only going to hire one of us. Yeah. When you have an office, somebody does a Google search, they're going to choose somebody. Nobody has two chiropractors. Right, right. Exactly. And I, I, I really, I really think that that's, that's what it comes down to is, is egos <laughs> and not yeah. wanting to, you know, have that competition mentality. Um, but in the sense of like, you know, the associates competing for the associateship, um, it's more the doctors competing to, you know, how cheap can I hire an associate? And I, that, I'm not saying that's the general mentality of doctors. I'm not saying that at all. Don't, yeah. please don't spam me with, with trigger mail. That doesn't sound nice. Um, but no, what I'm saying is like a, associates oftentimes will be in this predicament. They won't really know what, where to turn. And I don't disagree with you that people should have agents or people should have, um, mentors that they've relied on throughout school to help them kind of guide them. Right. A lot of times yeah. for me, that was my doc who I, who I went to when I was 13 and I said, I want to do exactly what you do. Right. And that was him. He was my sound. He is still my sounding board. He's the yeah. doc I rely on for most things. He's the guy I call up at midnight saying, dude, I don't know what to do. I, you know, all of this fell through, where do I turn? Right. And that to me, is a little bit different, but also the fact of the matter is, is if I were to send a contract to you, you, and you were like, John, that's garbage, right? That's a garbage contract. I could send it to the next chiropractor who's, who's 
you know, looking at, who, at being quote my agent. Right. And they could be like, yeah. that's a great contract. You should sign that you rock, like go get it. Like it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Right. It doesn't really yeah. work like that because, but what you said is so true. And I want to mention this chiropractic students don't know their worth. They don't know their value. I'm speaking for myself as well. Yeah. I don't know my value. I don't know. I just got asked last night on a phone call with my, like one of my best friends here at chiropractic school. And he, we, he, he and I were talking about contracts. He just got sent one. I said, let me help you because I've kind of navigated this for the last month. And I want to, yeah. you know, share with you some insight that I've gotten. Um, and so we were kind of talking and he was just saying, you know, like it's a, it's a really great deal, blah, blah, blah. And I, I was like, okay, but you have to think of, of the repercussions of going there for this long or, or what you want to do in 10, 15 years from now. Right. And I think yeah. that a lot of us don't know. And a lot of associates are really confused <laughs> because we, we don't know our worth. We don't know what we have. And he's like, what about certifications? Right. What about certifications and all this stuff? I'm like, to be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know what that's worth to anybody, if, if anything, right? It depends who you're going to associate with. Because you could be like, I love that certification and I need that person in my office. Or I could go to the next guy and they could be like, that's, I don't know what that even is, right? It just looks like I, I will. I will tell you that there is no certification that anyone's going to care about. What they care about is that heart, that attitude. Exactly. Exactly. And so I think that's, that's what it comes down to. And I, I agree with you. I do think Mad Cairo Matchmakers is a great company. I think we need companies like that doing what they're doing. Um, and and that's, that is what it is. I think that what we do as, as a profession, right, and how we treat our students, how we really give back to the students is going to shape our future. It's as simple as that. The politics, the research, the education. I would put the education all the way up at the top. And that is where we need to start when it comes to, you know, delivering content and value for chiropractic students. But that's just who I am. <laughs> for sure. I just think we're maybe, underserved. Maybe I, maybe I care too much. Maybe, you know, maybe, like maybe when you go, that's it. When you go for your interviews, they're going to be like, Johnny, what's your biggest weakness? Well, sometimes I just... I work so hard that I can, I can, I can burn myself out. You know? <laughs> People have told me I'm, I'm too good at what I do. <laughs> no, it was interesting, it's man. that, it's that, right. it's that Wisconsin uh, groundedness that I really appreciate <laughs> about you. Um, I am excited about the first chiropractic combine though. I think that's a, I think. That's a good I, idea. I, why don't we go in leverage media and the legendary chiropractor collab uh, on, on, Boom. We got a, we got an associate. Dude, I'm telling you, we gotta, we gotta do, we gotta do a combine. I'll say like, even if it was, I'll dude, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, I am, I am in on this idea. 1000%. I want it to be at the Gonstead clinic. I want it to be, and I'm not, I'm just like, Johnny, just get 10 of your friends together and I'll find like 10 people that are looking for associateship. These, the, whoever you can find that does not care about location if they don't care about location and they're just like, I just want to go get a good experience, have them come to the combine. I will figure out how to have this combine and I will find 10, 15, 20 doctors that will come and do it just because they like hanging out and doing funny stuff. But I, and also that they're looking for associates. I'm telling you, like, let's do this. I have got a really busy schedule over the next three months, but I will make this happen. John Ruder coming in at six foot one, weighing 200 pounds. <laughs> it's like, Dude, I'm going to make you so a 40. A recent chiropractic school graduate graduated in March of 2020 looking for an That's associateship right. in Chicago, Illinois. Who's interested? He's going to run the John, 40 meter dash. <laughs> John, have you ever seen that video of Tom Brady from the draft where he's like in his boxer shorts and he just looks like, like a wet old man? Uh, that's going to be you. Like, we're going to put you in your boxer shorts. We're going to have you turn around. It's just going to be like a total meat market. It's going to be great. Here, this is, this is what the back of my shirt will say. This is what the back of my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, dude, I'm not, I'm now I'm not even kidding anymore. Now I'm going to do it, uh, whether you help me or not. And I just think it'll be easier if you help me. Um, <laughs> my my I love this so, idea just for the content, so dude, right like right as, as two content creators, you know, this is a good idea. 
this is great. This is viral content. This is this is what we dream you. to produce. <laughs> I knew that this collab was gonna work out. <laughs> And it just led to another collab. You're going to, and then you're just serendipitously going to be in Chicago. I'm going to be in Chicago for a whole week for the first time. And I don't know how long it's meant to happen, dude. We are figuring this out. Meant to happen. Yeah. Eventually like it, you know, at the, the NFL draft uh, this year is in Las Vegas and they're going to have the stage in the Bellagio fountain to where they like walk out into the fountain like within like five years, I feel like the combine could be in the Bellagio fountain if we do this right. Okay, the, hold up. The NFL has taken how long to get into the Bellagio fountain? And you're putting yeah. us chiropractic students at five years to get in there? No, me and you. Like we'll figure out how the, – the chiropractic students will never figure it out. But I feel like you and I – like the NFL has already given us the idea – now it's just like, I mean, it's just permitting. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> I think people would like it in on the strip as well. I think our state um, All right, so if you, like, okay, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I want to know if you're still listening to this, which the, of the six of you that are listening to this, if you are a doctor that is interested in getting a stud associate, would you be interested in going to the Gonstead Clinic for a chiropractic uh, combine? If you are a student or you're someone who's looking for an associateship, would you be interested in going? The reason why I am so fascinated with this is the, um, I basically did this when I, so I graduated from school in April of 2006. Yeah, April 2006. And I went to Las Vegas to become a professional gambler. And I just so happened to be sitting at a table with these guys from Pittsburgh and we were playing no limit hold'em and uh, they, they said, well, what do you do? And I was like, I just graduated from chiropractic school. And they were like, oh, our buddy's a chiropractor and he's here for a seminar. And they introduced me to Lee Newman. I don't know if you know who that is, but he's like, he's a chiropractic coach. So they introduced me to Lee Newman, who is a degenerate gambler just like me. And I love him for that. And he was like, I have this, I have this, uh, this seminar coming up and it's four doctors that are trying to like scale their practice and bring on associates. And I think it was like the whole point of the seminar was to like build a million dollar associate. And he had me come in there and he interviewed me in the front of the room in front of all these people. And I, you know, I'm a, I'm a somewhat charismatic person and I didn't have a job and I was just like in Vegas for whatever. I had like five people offer me a job. So I really was a part of the first chiropractic combine in my mind. And now I'm just trying to continue the tradition. I love it, doc. I think it's this great. is so good. I, I think we're going to make so it happen. Good. I do. I'm not kidding. Like you, we're going to have, I'm going to have seven drinks like to your like one beer uh, when we're talking about this next Wednesday. And I'm just going to, you don't know, I get really fired up about certain stuff doc, and I, I can already to, feel it. I went to school in Wisconsin, doc, doc. I, Come on. I'm not saying you beer. can't drink. I'm just saying that like, you're going to be like wanting to be professional and like, you know, keep it to like a two drink minimum. And I'm going to be on my seventh scotch, just like screaming at you, like spit flying all over. And it's just, and by the end of it, we're going to have a, we're going to have a chiropractic combine. It's going to be great. It'll be outlined. All in right. Google great. docs somewhere. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, I, I literally, I have a three and a half hour drive in front of me. It's now 9 PM. I've had an awesome time with you tonight. I feel like we've been talking for like three hours now we between. Have. So if you, if you have not checked out the legendary podcast, please check it out. Um, I'm going to be on there at some point in the future. Um, uh, Johnny, I really appreciate, uh, you being on here, giving so much great insight, uh, into the associate, the, the potential associates mind. Is there anything you want to share, uh, with everybody, uh, before we go? Just if you're a chiropractic student specifically stay the course, right? Like I, I, like I said, I talked to my buddy last night and I, I literally had to kind of wake him up. Right. And say, Hey, I know you got deals coming at you, whatever offerings, but you're about to cross the stage to something that you've wanted to do. A lot of times with chiropractic students, it's what you've wanted to do for your entire life or a majority of your life. Right. Um, it's, it's really a magical time and don't let that get diluted with the, the stress and the anxiety that comes with trying to find an associateship, trying to find a job and reading through contracts, reach out to people, 
ask for help. If you ask for help, people will help you. They will offer their assistance. Um, I, I know for a fact that I am totally up to helping anybody, any chiropractic student that just either wants to talk, wants to, wants to ask me about specific associateship opportunities. I'm more than willing to offer my, my advice and or <laughs> a mixture of my advice and my opinion. Um, but I, I really encourage you to not get down on yourself. Don't beat yourself over, a head, over the head with a, with a bat and say, you know, oh, I'm doing all of this wrong. Your journey is specific to you. Your individuality is specific to you. Um, and it is, who you, it is who you are. It makes you who you are. It builds character. And when you cross that stage, is it great to have everything figured out? Yes. Is it okay if you don't? Yes. But make something happen. Put the, put the pieces together as many as you can before you cross that stage for graduation. And you're going to crush it in chiropractic. We need you. We need more chiropractors. We absolutely need more chiropractors in this world. We only have about, I think it's like 70 to 80,000 right now in the world. And it's, it's too little. It's too little chiropractors and, and, and a lot of patients. <laughs> and so yeah, right. we're, we're trying our hardest to, to build this up. And the only way to do that, I go back to the students and that's you guys. That's the students. So I love you guys. I thank you. Please check out, if you're interested, check out the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. It's a really great platform and podcast. Check out thelegendarychiropractor.com. Um, it's a great platform for chiropractic students to better connect with docs and also just enjoy past Facebook lives that I've done. Dr. Nick will be on there. Um, and past podcast episodes that I've done. It's, it's a lot of fun. If you have any questions or need anything ever from me, I'm more than willing to be a sounding board and a, and a mentor for you. So I love you guys. I appreciate it. And I thank you so much for listening to me rant occasionally us, us discovering mark the date to, to 2020 um, of the chiropractic combine and uh, chiropractic student associate or chiropractic associate combine mark the date mark your calendars um, and in five years we're going to be on the fountain of the Bellagio with a stage drafting with hats and and gear <laughs> and it's going to be great so I love you guys thank you so much for listening to me I, I really appreciate Dr. Nick for having me on this is a great show and um, I am I'm hopefully on a successful path to a million. <laughs> and I hope to get there by surrounding myself with Dr. Nick and, and many like him. So I appreciate you, Doc. Johnny, I, the thing I love about you is that I can, always, uh, I can always depend on you going on like a five minute rant <laughs> as I am buying chirocombine.com. It is so official right now. We got it. <laughs> I'm telling you, oh. man. I love it. Please hit us up below this video. If you are in for Chiro Combine, reach out to me, reach out to Johnny, and we'll see you on the next one.